Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a tech tutorial. I know a lot of times, especially lately, uh, this channel has been focused on some gaming stuff. Uh, however, I do also enjoy anything and everything relating to tech. Uh, so for today's video, we are doing a tech tutorial. And what we're doing in today's video is showing you guys how to install Tails onto a USB thumb drive that you can then boot the Tails operating system from any computer that you wish. Uh, it's not very complicated, but there's a couple issues you can run into. And I thought making this tutorial might help a lot of people out uh, as I've been more and more interested in digital security and privacy uh, ever since. Uh, well, I've always been interested in it. Uh, however, I've never made a big deal about it. However, lately with a lot of social media and seeing a couple different documentaries, including the uh, one that's been most popular lately on Netflix, uh, which is called The Social Dilemma, I thought it would be worthy to uh, make a video about this as I, I believe it's something that even if you're not using, you should at least know about uh, for the future uh, because it's crazy just how much tracking of your data and of yourself that these companies do. And the biggest complaint I always get or the biggest pushback is always, oh, but I don't do anything that, you know, I don't care if anybody knows. And that might very well be true. Uh, but nonetheless, you may at some point in your life find yourself uh, wanting to be able to browse the internet or browse uh, things that you might just not want other people to know about, whether that's because of any kind of legality reason or just because you don't want people to know your business. Whatever the case, that's what this video hopes to solve. All right, let's run the intro and then jump into it. All right, guys, so the first thing that you're going to want to do in order to install Tails uh, is go to the Tails website, uh, which you can see here in the top of the screen. I'll also put it down in the description below, uh, but it's called Tails. I cannot pronounce it, but we'll say Boom, B O U M dot org. When you go there, you'll be directed to their webpage, uh, their homepage, which looks like this. And the first thing we want to do is get Tails. Uh, once you select that, you're going to decide what operating system you're installing Tails from. Uh, for most people, it's going to be Windows, including myself. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select the Windows button. Uh, so then you get presented with this option, which says install from another Tails. So if you know somebody that already has Tails installed that you trust, uh, then that could be the best way to get it, as you can just clone their copy of Tails from their USB stick to yours. Uh, which if you trust the person, like really, really, really trust them, then you should know that your version is safe and secure. However, if you're doing it for yourself, you're going to need to download and install it. And it tells you what you're going to need, a USB stick, an hour to download it, and a half an hour to install it. Although realistically, it really doesn't take that long. So we're going to click install from Windows as that's what most you're going to be doing. Uh, it's going to again tell you what you need. It's going to tell you the step that you're going to do. That's what you're watching this video for. So we're just going to hit let's go. And then you're going to get presented with the actual screen to download Tails. The current version at the making of this video is Tails 4.3. They just released it. Uh, however, once you install it, you'll be able to auto update it uh, from your USB drive whenever they post a new update. So we're going to go ahead and download Tails 4.13 USB image. It tells you it's 1.2 gigs. You do need at least an eight gigabyte thumb drive. Uh, to download and install Tails. I would recommend giving yourself a little bit more. For example, this one here that I use is a 32 gigabyte uh, because that allows you to do what's called persistent storage because the way Tails works is that every single time you shut it down, it resets back to the default. Anything you downloaded, anything you installed, anything you did gets erased. Uh, it's part of how it keeps everything so secure. Uh, so, But there is an option where you can encrypt basically part of your thumb drive to where you can save files or maybe Word documents you're working on, anything like that to the drive, and that persists through that shutting down and restarting of the operating system. All right, so you got your thumb drive. We're going to download it. I already downloaded it just for you know the sake of saving time, so I'm going to click I already downloaded Tails. And then this next step, a lot of people like to skip. And there's two ways that you can verify your Tails copy, your download. The first is using their browser extension, when, which makes it super quick and easy. And that's the way that we're going to do it today, as, as that's the way most people are going to be able to do it quickly and easily. Uh, so you're going to download the extension for Firefox, Chrome, install it, and verify your copy. The other way that you can do it is, is using OpenPGP. Uh, this is definitely the 
best way to do it if you know how to use OpenPGP. Uh, basically, OpenPGP is a way of uh, verifying signatures of people online. So you can basically verify that something's coming from where it says it's coming from in its basic form. Again, it's a lot more complicated than that. It involves a lot of crypt uh, uh, encryption and cryptography. Again, we won't go into it too much. I mean, I'm no expert on it anyways by the mean, but for the sake of this, we're gonna install the Tails Verification Browser. So we're gonna click that. We're gonna click Add to Chrome. We're gonna click Add Extension. It's gonna add it. It says it's here. And then what we're gonna do is verify Tails 4.13. I have it saved here on my desktop. So all you're gonna do is then click that, click open, and it's gonna verify that this is indeed an actual copy of Tails, that it's not been compromised, that their website's not been hacked and something happened. Uh, and that's all this extension is doing. Uh, because again, the, the biggest thing with Tails is that you're trusting the source that it comes from. You're trusting that there's gonna be nothing on this device where somebody could track you or find out who you are. So you can see here that the verification was a success. So we're gonna go ahead and click next and install Tails. All right. So these are the instructions. So not to go through all the instructions, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of screen here. I already got everything installed, but the first thing, well, actually, let me pull it back up here for one minute. The first thing you're going to want to do is install Etcher. So Etcher allows you to take that image that we just downloaded and send it to uh, your USB drive and actually unzip it and all that stuff. So you'll see there will be a link here that you're going to download and then you'll download it to your desktop. It'll, it'll be a direct link. I already have it downloaded. Uh, so we're going to continue from there. So the next step you're going to want to do is actually plug your USB drive into your windows machine. Okay. So once we plug in the USB drive that we're going to use, we're going to want to click and open etcher portable, which is the second program we downloaded. It's not the actual image file but it's the, it's the application that's going to uh, put the image file unzipped onto our USB stick. If you have the USB stick uh, attached to your computer, it should pop up automatically, but if not, you can uh, click this middle button and set it to whatever drive you want. As you can see for me, it did pop right up. Uh, it is a SanDisk Cruiser Glide USB device, uh, a 32 gigabyte device. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna do. So now what we wanna do is flash from file in the first one. We wanna select that image file that we downloaded. So here it is on the desktop once again, Tails AMD64 4.13. Your version may be slightly different, but we're gonna go ahead and select that. So now we have the image selected. It automatically recognized our USB that we have plugged in and we're gonna click the flash button to proceed. But before we do that, I do wanna mention that you do wanna make sure that this is a .image file, .img. If you accidentally downloaded, say for example, the version that goes on a DVD disc, uh, which is a .iso file, uh, then you then back at the start, you downloaded the wrong file and you're gonna to wanna to make sure uh, that you go back and get the actual .img file. Once you're sure of that, you got your, your right drive selected, your USB stick, we're gonna hit flash. So then what the program's gonna do is it's gonna give you a security dialog box that we're gonna hit yes on, and it's gonna go ahead and start doing it. Uh, once it's finished flashing the drive, it's actually gonna verify that everything was installed correctly and that Tails is uh, installed properly onto the USB drive. And once that finishes, we'll, we'll then have completely installed Tails onto the USB drive. And then the next step is just gonna be booting it up. But you've officially installed Tails. So let's go ahead and speed it up and let it finish doing this. And then I'll chat with you guys here in a minute again. All right, and once it's done and it's verified, you'll be presented with this screen from Etcher, uh, which says flash complete, one successful target, and then it'll ask you if you wanna flash another. We don't, we'll just go ahead and close it out. And you now have officially installed Tails onto your USB stick. So we can go ahead and remove it from the computer. And one important note uh, that Tails recommends, uh, and and it's not a big deal, but but you know, again, the thing with security is you always want to, you know, kind of be over paranoid almost, uh, even if you're not actually paranoid, uh, just because there are crazy things that could happen that would then give away your identity. So, for example, once you have actually installed it and you're good to go, you don't ever really want to plug this in while your computer is on and running in Windows or any other operating system. Because in theory, you could get a virus on your Windows device or on you know whatever device you're using that while this is plugged in while you're running that operating system, 
uh, could get in and affect your Tails operating system. Uh, it's never happened. You know, it's not a thing that you should probably worry about too much. Uh, but again, if you're trying to keep the utmost uh, security and anonymity that you can, uh, you never want to plug this in again while a system is running. So typically what you want to do is if your Windows machine is running like it is now, you would power it down, shut it down. Once it's off, plug in your USB drive. Uh, and then when you start up your computer, what we're going to do to actually access it is most computers, when you start, when you start it up, you're presented with a screen uh, that allows you to enter the boot mode of the computer. So for me, that's F10 as I'm booting up. It might be different for your, uh, you know, motherboard. Uh, but basically, once we start loading up, we want to go into the boot menu and then we're going to select this so that we never actually load into Windows or whatever operating system we're using. But we're going directly into Tails from the computer being in an off state. All right. So in order to do that, I obviously can't screen cap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, everything and get everything ready to actually load in the tails and show you kind of the, the steps of then getting into the system. Uh, so I'm going to have to set up a computer actually looking at my monitor uh, as there is no way to screen cap, at least not that I know of. There, there might be some kind of software or something that lets you do it. Uh, but for sake of this video and for ease of doing so, I'm just going to capture the monitor using a normal camera. So it might not be the best quality. You're probably not going to see me on screen anymore, uh, but we'll actually show you what happens when you load up and what you have to do to boot up to this USB drive, as well as how to set up persistent storage if that's something you're interested in doing. I will say if you don't have a need for setting up persistent storage, uh, I probably wouldn't set it up until you get to the point where you feel like you do have a need. But we'll at least show you how to do it uh, whenever that need comes up for you. You'll at least then be prepared or can refer back to this video at a later date. All right. With that said, I'm going to stop blabbering. And next thing you guys see will be me speaking to you as we're looking at the screen and actually booting into Tails from our USB drive that we just created. All right. Let's go. All right, guys, and now here we are with the computer shut down. So what we're going to do from here is go ahead and turn on the computer. And as it starts loading up here, you guys will see the screen come on here in one second. And like I said, you're going to want to go into your boot menu as it does. So here we go. And you see I said F10, but it was actually F12 for me. But I popped down there on the bottom of the screen and I hit that, which then gives me uh, the list of where I want to boot from. So I want to boot from that SanDisk drive. So we're going to click that and then boom, it's going to jump up to here. And immediately after a couple seconds, it's going to start loading into actual tails. So we're going to let it do that and get to the welcome screen. And then we will go from there. Okay. And once everything loads up in tails, uh, you're going to be presented with the welcome to tails screen, which you guys can see here on the screen now. Uh, but before we actually jump into starting Tails and going any further, let me point out a couple things. First and foremost is if you decide to start checking out Tails, the first thing that you must be ready for is things not working. Uh, so there's a couple things with Tails. Um, like for example, when I first started using Tails um, on this particular PC, I have two different monitors. This is a two monitor PC setup. And when I would try to boot Tails, instead of seeing the welcome screen like you're seeing in front of the screen now, I would just see the blue background screen. And the reason for that was my main monitor, which is DisplayPort, was being registered. So the information was being displayed on that screen. However, because it's DisplayPort and the second monitor is HDMI, uh, it actually did not show me the main screen. So I had no way of doing anything and couldn't get it to start. So in order for me to run Tails, I actually had to go down to one monitor, meaning I unplugged my main uh, display, which runs through DisplayPort, and I'm just using my smaller monitor, which runs through HDMI. So if you're having problems uh, getting this screen to pop up, most likely it has to do with your monitor or the way that your monitor's hooked up. So I would recommend going down to a one monitor setup, at least to start. Once we get in, you can plug back in the second monitor and use it, uh, which is the case in my case. Once I'm in and Tails has started, I can plug in the second monitor, go into the display settings of Tails and actually have it so that I'm then able to use it. Uh, but for getting started, if you're running into an issue, go down to one monitor. And if you're using DisplayPort, try HDMI or you know VGA, whatever other possible uh, connections you can use. The second thing with Tails 
is that Wi-Fi does not get recognized uh, very well. So there is actually a brand that Tails themselves recommends uh, called uh, Panda, and there's two different versions. There's a faster Wi-Fi speed and a slower Wi-Fi speed, um, which I'll link down in the description below. Uh, however, the card I'm using, at least for this tutorial, um, in order for it to work, I have to take off MAC address spoofing. Uh, you don't normally want to do this because the way that Tails keeps your anonymity um, is by and your 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 you know your your identity hidden is the fact that all Tails users and all Tor browser users, which is the Onion browser that you actually use to browse the internet, all make all of the users using these systems look identical. Uh, so anytime you change any settings, you no longer look identical to all the other Tails or Tor users out there. Uh, so your best bet, especially if you're doing things where you really need to keep your anemone and stuff, uh, would be to get uh, a wireless card that works without having to turn off MAC address spoofing. But with that said, for this tutorial, just showing you how, how it works, uh, I'm using what I got lying around at my disposal at the moment. Uh, so I got to turn off MAC address spoofing. Once we do that, we can go ahead and click Tails to enter in. And by the way, if... Uh, you don't have a wireless card that works and you have the option, you could just plug in via um, Ethernet. Ethernet's definitely the best option if you're able to do so. Once that's said, we are then loaded into uh, Tails, the operating system, as you can see. Uh, and then we can go ahead and connect to our network and everything. You can see here up at the top right where the power button is, there's a drop down box. We can click that. We can then select the Wi-Fi, select our network, put in our password and all that. It'll connect us to the onion circuits, which will then allow us to have online connectivity. And then you can click on applications over here and open the Tor browser, which might be something you're already familiar with if you're looking at install and tails. But the onion browser is an application. It's a web browser built off of Firefox uh, that's entirely built around security. Um, so we're not going to go ahead and turn on the internet because again, this is just showing you how to install it in this tutorial. But one last thing that I do want to show you guys how to install is uh, how to do persistent storage uh, if you need to do that. So the way that we do that is we click on applications up here, we go down to tails and we go to configure persistent volume. Once you click on uh, configure persistent volume, you'll be presented with this dialog box, uh, which basically tells you how much space you can see here. I used a 32 gigabyte stick. So I'll have 21.81 gigabytes of persistent volume that's going to be created. Uh, and the data on this volume is stored in an encrypted password. So you have to create a passphrase. So that's where you would type in here, just like you would if you were setting up a passphrase for anything else. However, with the recommendation of Tails or the recommendation for this passphrase, and again, thinking about security and identity you know, prevention or being able to identify it, the best type of password to use or, or the, the most common that is suggested is to use a string of words, uh, random words. So it might be something like uh, Tails, Password, um, Amazon, uh, Facebook, fun, y you get the idea. Just random words. Uh, you know, I'm just picking stuff that I see around me, uh, but it could be anything. You know, it could be apple, banana, blueberry, like, and, and the recommendation is to pick at least five. I would personally recommend at least six uh, words that you then type in uh, to make your password. So for example, we'll do apples, or apple, acorn, um, dispute, canon, system, and birthday. And then we're going to type that same passphrase down in the second box to verify it. And once we do that, which for me, I'm just going to copy it. You should not copy it. You want to make sure it's right. You should do this. Then you're going to create the create button. And then once you do that, you now have uh, persistent storage. So what'll happen is when you shut down Tails, whenever you load it up, like we did originally, 
So we click on, you know, we load up our, our boot selector, which is F12 for my motherboard. We select the SanDisk uh, USB stick. We get to the Tails welcome screen. You'll then need to type in this passphrase anytime you want to unlock that persistent volume. And again, this will then allow you to save files, uh, download download applications and stuff that would get saved there, install applications that would then be here every single time you load up Tails. Now again, unless you, unless you have a specific reason to do this, I don't even recommend setting up persistent storage uh, until that need comes. There's just no reason to do it. Um, now, if you're a journalist or something that's trying to work in secret, work in the dark, keep things under wrap, and you need to set up, um, you know, different, uh, you know, you need to be able to write down documents and stuff, set up sources, save, you know, maybe leak documents, things like that then of course you're gonna to need to enable this persistent volume. But most people that get on, uh, that start using this type of software, number one, most people just need Tor the Onion browser, which you can actually use uh, just directly from Windows by downloading Tor browser. Uh, those that are actually using Tails uh, might not even need, um, it might still only be doing it so that they can browse the internet, check you know maybe Bitcoin addresses, secret emails, things like that and still might not need to uh, set up a persistent volume. They might not actually be saving any kind of documents or anything. Uh, so again, that's totally up to you, but that's how you do it. And when you load up the welcome screen to Tails, like I said, you'll be then presented. It'll tell you that this drive has a persistent volume and you can decide each session whether you actually want to unlock that or not. Uh, so again, anytime you're just getting on to maybe browse the internet, check email, things like that, uh, where you don't need the persistent volume, even if you have it set up, I would recommend not unlocking it. Only unlock it if you need to actually access it or be able to save something permanently. All right, and that's it, guys. That's how you do it. That's how you set it up. Uh, and then to get out of it, you just click this uh, drop-down box up here and click power down, and it'll close everything out. And that's it. Hope this helped. Hope it showed you guys how to do it. It's pretty easy. Um, it's not as difficult as it may seem. Uh, again, this is running on Linux, so it might be uh, something you're not used to. It might take some getting used to. Uh, however, Linux has come pretty far in the last couple years, uh, so I don't think it's going to be as crazy as you'd think. All right. With that said, I hope this helped you out. If you guys have any questions or run into any issues, go ahead and leave a comment down in the descriptions below, and I'll, I'll be happy to do what I can to help. Also, I do run a Discord server. Again, I do a lot of gaming stuff as well, so the servers mainly focus around gaming, but you're welcome to find the link down below and check out my Discord server as well and get any help over there that you may need. All right, thanks so much. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button. That helps me out tremendously. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe bu button below as well as ring the bell next to it to be notified of, well, whatever I feel like creating. <laughs> gaming stuff, tech stuff, uh, occasionally some travel stuff with COVID that's a little limited. Uh, but again, hope it helped out. If it did hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. And until next time, peace out everybody. Uh -huh.